Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to Lamp Working 101.34. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys a technique that you may or may not have heard of before. It's called the pseudo onion skin technique. And I got this technique from one of my favorite marble makers, um, Drew Fritz. This is my marble making Bible. It's thick, it's got great step-by-step -step images, and this one right here is the one that we're going to work on, the pseudo onion skin. And uh, it's pretty, it's just beautiful. We're gonna do some cane working first to show you how to pull the specific cane to then apply it for your onion skin pattern. And uh, yeah, we better go ahead and get started because this may take some time. So thanks for watching you guys. As always, I appreciate every one of you and have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time in the dungeon. All right, so for this cane that we're gonna pull, you're gonna need some throwaway mandrels. Make sure they're straight or as straight as you can get them. Mine are a little thicker. They're more like an eighth inch thick. And this helps me to pull a larger bit of cane. And what I'm doing is starting in the center and we are going to put stripes all the way down this. So I'm getting just like an inch and a half. You don't have to get this much. You can start with just a, a little bit as, much, as long as you can think you're comfortable with. But what I'm basically doing here is laying down the cane. So every time I pick up a new color, I'm very gently, actually, it's, it's very slow but it looks like I'm just like, you know, going in and out of the flame really, really fast. But it's very slow because what I'm doing is trying to heat up the same amount of cane that I want to lay down. So it makes it easier for me to then stick it to the end and heat just underneath and where you're sticking it to. On both sides I hope that makes sense but it's very gentle you just need to make sure you have you know everything under control heating gently back and forth take your time because every time you add color this one's a little crackly but every time you add a bit of color you are heating up everything there's some schmutz on there, so it gets started burning. But um, And then here, what I'm doing is I'm just adding a very small amount of black to kind of set things off. I have no idea at this point what is going to be the outcome of this cane. I just decided, well, you know, I just want to use some really cool bright colors and offset it with some black and see what happens. But here's the really cool part, is that once you get everything on there, make sure that you, you know, put your other punty on there, but not in so deep, okay? Make sure your punties are not way in the glass. This is important. And then you're going to roll your edges down a little bit. There we go. And you're just heating things in very gently, trying to maintain uh, stripes. And then right here is where things get different. Give it a quarter turn and then bring them both together at the bottom. Keep things moving with gravity and kind of gently push or roll everything together. Don't panic. <laughs> It's not that hard. And then you're going to punny up on the other side. And then usually this happens a little easier. But um, yeah, just make sure you get one of those other uh, bits of uh, one of those other punties off. And now we have this doubled up cane. I've never doubled it up after that. But who knows? Maybe one of you guys will. And now is where we're actually going to pull the cane out. And I made so much of this cane that I literally had to bend 
the ends of the mandrels to give it the widest stretch that I possibly could. See my mandrels? <laughs> so I just break that off with a little bit of water. Okay, so here's like the easy part. You have all your cane, make sure you have cut it down into manageable lengths and then get your base color going. In this one, it shall be white. And I'm just gonna do what I always do. Start by getting the width that I want. And I want this to be a nice long, just a, a nice, <laughs> I know I always say football shape, but you know, it's, uh, it's just gonna be a nice oval pendant. But I know I'm going to be adding a lot on this, so I don't want this center core to be too big. That's important. What I do want, though, is to make it look nice. So before I move on, I make sure that the edges are the same on both sides. So if I have one side that's a little curved, I add a little bit of glass. Not on the mandrel, but on the bead. And then usually it just uh, rolls out perfectly. And now this is where I am going to be adding the thicker. I thought I'd use, there's a thicker and thinner part of this cane. So I'm putting it on and I'm also kind of like turning the cane, trying not to get the same uh, pattern every time. And I just heat the top of the cane, touch it to the top of the bead and bring it all the way around to the bottom all the way from the top to the bottom and now I'm using thinner cane and uh, the thinner cane was a little different and now I'm just filling in gaps and things and some of this cane was very cracky and some of it broke a little bit but you find in the long run that those become even more interesting after you have uh, finished your bead or your pendant. This part right here, I'm not sure why I decided to wrap this cane around there like that, but uh, I don't know. It, uh, but it looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool. So now what I want to do is just get it into a nice tight shape the shape that I'm kind of going for, a football shape. I want to get everything to the edge, all that color. I want to make sure that there isn't any white showing at all. So I keep heating, like I heated one side, then I heated the middle, and then I heat the other side. And now I'm gonna bring all that cane as close as I can to the mandrel itself. And that's gonna help everything just look a lot better. Now it's just a matter of shaping. And I really want to make sure I have the perfect shape that I need before I start to encase it in clear, which is what I'm doing right now. So I take off that little first bit because usually sometimes it has some bubbles in it and I don't want any bubbles in this, but sometimes you can't help it and it doesn't uh, look horrible as long as you don't get like a whole army of bubbles in there somewhere, you should be okay. And a lot of the reason why people get bubbles in their clear or in their glass is because they're too close to the, um, you know, the tip of the torch. So I get a really nice big ball of clear, enough to, to where I know I can go from the top all the way to the bottom. It doesn't always work out, but then I'll fill in the gaps, always overlapping as I go to try to prevent as many bubbles as possible. And then I'll add a little bit to the ends just to make sure that I have enough to where the clear will um, heat itself. I'll heat the clear on the edges so it will draw itself near to the edge of the mandrel. That sounds great, huh? And that's about it for this bead. 
just let it cool down and it's really awesome. I love it. It's amazing. It's such a great effect. <laughs>